This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. In this video, I'm going to talk about the mandibular central incisor. So here we have the permanent mandibular central incisor and it's the first succedaneous tooth to erupt into the arch, replacing the primary mandibular central incisors. Using the universal tooth numbering system, this would include tooth number 24 and 25. So this tooth is unique for a few reasons. In an ideal occlusion, like what you would see represented by a plastic model of teeth, the four central incisors should share the midline. And the mandibular central incisor should take up about two-thirds the width of a maxillary central incisor. And other than the upper third molars, the mandibular centrals are the only teeth in the mouth that share an occlusal contact with only one opposing tooth. Every other tooth in the mouth should occlude or oppose two other teeth. And that's due to the reduced mesiodistal width of the mandibular central when related to the maxillary central. Just like the other incisors that we've talked about, the crown has a trapezoid shape from the facial view, tapering down to its neck. But there are a handful of other features that make this tooth rather unique. It's the most narrow of all the teeth and overall smallest tooth in the entire mouth. It's also the most symmetrical tooth from mesial to distal, and it's actually hard to distinguish which is which. The only thing we can notice is that the distal surface is slightly more convex when viewed from the facial surface. And once again, that apex tends to point a little bit to the distal. It has the sharpest incisal corners of any tooth, both at around 90 degrees. And it also has the shortest of all the roots. Now for the lingual aspect. So all mandibular anterior teeth, incisors and canines, have smaller, less distinct marginal ridges and cingula compared to the maxillary anterior teeth. As a result, you'll never see things like lingual pits on these mandibular incisors, for example. I would even go so far to say that this tooth specifically has the least exciting anatomy of any tooth in the mouth. So from the side view now, this is a really important fact that gets asked on the board exam. Where does the incisal edge of a mandibular incisor fall relative to the long axis? So most often, if we trace that imaginary long axis line, that incisal edge is going to fall lingual to that long axis. Basically, it's like a hawk bill lateral incisor from the last video. Remember, maxillary incisal edges usually fall on the long axis when it's drawn, but mandibular incisal edges usually fall lingual to the long axis, thanks to its backward leaning facial surface. The other important feature I wanna point out is this root concavity. This developmental depression is an important characteristic of mandibular incisors, and it appears on both the mesial surface and the distal surface. But the distal root depression is usually deeper than it is on the mesial aspect. And as we've seen before, the CEJ or cervical line on the distal is slightly less curved than it was on the mesial. Any anterior mandibular tooth is going to be wider facial-lingually than mesiodistally. So FL is greater than MD, which is the exact opposite of the maxillary arch, where the mesiodistal dimension was greater than the facial-lingual dimension. Just like the maxillary incisors, it usually has three pulp horns in accordance with those three facial developmental lobes. And most of the time there is one canal, but 
unlike the maxillary incisors, there's a chance, in fact, a 30% chance, that we see two separate root canals. If we cut the tooth into cross-section at the middle of the root, we see a ribbon shape. That's a unique shape, and that's because of those deep developmental depressions on both the mesial and distal root surfaces that we looked at before. So a summary of the mandibular central incisor, the incisocervical dimension is greater than the facio-lingual dimension, which is greater than the mesiodistal dimension. It's the narrowest tooth, the most symmetrical tooth, trapezoid from the facial, triangular from the side view. It has a ribbon cross-section, and it's most often composed of four lobes, three pulp horns, and one or maybe two canals. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.